Alrighty, got the final beer in the Cowbell Mixed six pack that I got for my birthday. It's been it's been almost a month. Um, but you know, with uh, not being home as often, uh, with school and whatnot, it takes a little while to get through some of the mixed sixes. But hey, we're here, and I'm drinking this now because I'm uh, I'm kind of I'm I got a little idea for a home brew that me and uh, me and my best friend Richie uh, will probably have brewed up. Um, once this video is posted, it's not ready. It's not ready, but there's going to be an aspect about this beer that directly relates to what we're brewing and I, I want you guys to guess in the comments what that aspect of this beer may be if somebody gets it and i really don't think anybody will you'll just have bragging rights so let's do this beer 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 ba beer ba beer 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 Hello everybody, welcome back to Mimei Brewski from the Ruski Brewski Review. And today the beer that I have for you guys is, like I said, by the Cowbell Brewing Company out of Blythe, Ontario. This is part of the Renegade series. This is their vanilla and oatmeal black lager. Boom. Haven't had a black lager in a little bit. Um, then again, I don't think I've ever had an oatmeal and vanilla black lager, or at least one that was clearly stated on the can, which is pretty cool. 4% 4, 4 alcohol is by volume, 18 IBUs, not too boozy, not too bitter. Should be uh, should be very enjoyable. A nice, like, relaxing, uh, relaxing sort of beer. Well, it's in pint glass, as per usual, for this round of recordings. Let's see what we got. Boom, that's about half the beer right there, I want to say, and that is looking fantastic. Beautiful, medium to dark brown head. That is an amazing looking head color. As for the beer itself, fairly dark. Uh, yeah, kind of hard. Yeah, really not getting a lot of browns, even with the, even in the uh, two bright lights here and off my uh, ring light here. Fairly dark, especially for a black lager. Pretty cool. Let's see how it smells, because that head is letting me know it's going to be tasty. On the nose, vanilla and like light sweet molasses just coming at you. Moving into a like oh beautiful beautiful milk chocolate like you you know when you're at a like a candy shop slash chocolate shop. There's one here in Unionville, uh, the the uh, the old fire uh, old fire hall confectionery, and you see them making the chocolate and just like have them melting and they're using the two paddles to like whipping it back and forth. That smells like a chocolate shop. That is, whoa. That is intense and insane of a nose. Little bit of biscuit in the background, not roasty at all. This is just straight up sweet, chocolatey goodness. Let's dive in. On the sip, okay, okay. That sweet, that overly intense sweetness is definitely coming through on the uh, on the flavor. Really do love that. Vanillas, very slight roastiness to it. A little biscuit, chocolate, milk chocolate, a little bit of like a dark or, or semi-sweet chocolate with that roastiness in the back end. But one thing I gotta say about this right now is that I really would think this would have been a hell of a lot better as a stout or a porter. Reason being, reason being is that since it is still a lager, it's lager based, it's just black and well, obviously chocolatey, vanilla and oatmeal-y, there's a little bit of a disconnect where you're getting all these bold and rich flavors and more sweet flavors and, but the, the beer itself is not wanting to be heavier and a little creamier like you would find in a stout. It's, it, it's cleaner and crisper like a lager and a little light, just like a lager is. So there's that disconnect between having big, bold, luscious flavors and having a body that just isn't able to, in a sense, handle that sort of flavor profile per se. Or like It can, but it doesn't give you the satisfaction of the flavors when it comes to mouthfeel. 
So it's a little, it's like a really light stout. We, in terms of mouthfeel, it's like a, take a stout full of flavor and then just cut that body in like half. So it's super light on the palate and down in the stomach, but you're getting these huge big flavors. It's like, it, it's almost outweighed. It's like the, the flavors are, and flavor intensity is all the way up here, but the body comparison is so much less that it just, it's a little weird to drink. But I think that was only the first sip. So with that said, guys, cheers, everybody. Well, let's keep on drinking. Yeah, just those bold and rich flavors without the weight. And I know I've said it before where some stouts that I get, they're a little lighter and like they're really enjoyable that way. But they're... They're... They're still a stout. You're still getting weight to them. And this is just so much flavor and it's amazing in that regard. But the body just doesn't hold up and it, you feel like you're kind of, it's like it's missing something. Because it's missing body that you get when you brew a stout or a porter. But as for flavor, mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Chocolate. Vanilla, milk chocolate, molasses, little bits of brown sugar, somewhat of a biscuity note, just very, very subtle, down in the back there somewhere. And then cl closer to the finish starts, you get that roast profile, just jumps up a little bit, not too much, just a little bit, introducing more of the uh, semi-sweet to dark chocolate notes. No real coffee going on in this bad boy here, but chocolate for sure, vanilla, the oats definitely, uh, the oats is kind of hard to pick out in this uh, per se. It doesn't really have a huge flavor, but I'm going to attribute that to that little biscuitiness of the beer. But goddamn, I kind of wish it was heavier. With this flavor intensity, I wish this beer was a lot heavier. But maybe, may, 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 oops, stutter, Jesus. Got a little bit of a stutter, guys. Don't worry about it. But maybe if you're the kind of person that really loves and loves and enjoys stouts, but maybe not really enjoying the heaviness of them, this is a solid, solid offering for people like that because it, it, it has all the flavors of a beautiful stout without a mass amount of heaviness or even just heaviness on even some of the lighter stouts, like an Irish dry stout. Damn. Damn. I gotta read the can and do the other things before I finish this beer. This is pretty stellar. Looking on the can. Cowbell Brewing Co. Oatmeal Vanilla Black Lager. Like I said, 4% ABV, 18 IBUs, so you can session these all day, more or less. Description. Oatmeal Vanilla Black Lager is a classic German-style lager brewed with rich roasted and highly caramelized grains. Fermented cool and lagered cold, then with an addition of natural vanilla. The resulting beer is an exceptionally smooth, delicious, and memorable. Six specially roasted malts provide a balanced character of roasted espresso, dark toast, and chocolate, while 20% oat builds a silky smooth body and creamy mouthfeel. Dark toast, I can kind of see that. That may be that little biscuity note that I'm getting mixed with some other flavors, just however you want to describe it. Not really getting espresso. Definitely more of a dark chocolate thing for me. But goddamn, and yeah, it is silky smooth, um, but doesn't have that weight like a stout would. Uh, other notes, we have yet yeah, 4%, 18 IBUs, SRM of 49, so the color of it. Glassware is a tulip glass, obviously breaking that rule because I don't give a fuck. But uh, no, it's just the glass I got, and I don't, I got one tulip glass left, and I do not want to wash that one later. Uh, Blythe Brewing and Distilling Incorporated for a cowbell. Pairings, we have burgers, fish and chips, nachos, roasted vegetables. Nachos in this, I can't see that. Maybe unless there was like a chili beef on there. Mm-hmm. But burgers, ooh. Yes. Fish and chips. Okay, yeah, I can kind of see that. I eat my fish with a lot of ketchup, so it wouldn't really go well, but that's just me and... I'm a little weird. It's something I used to do as a kid and just haven't grown out of it, funny enough. Tasting. We have espresso, vanilla, cacao, freshly baked, fresh baked cookies. Yeah, I can see that if you really want to, you know, 
describe it like that? Hell yeah. Pretty fantastic brew. Over on the website, cowbellbrewing, uh, uh, yeah, cowbellbrewing.com, you go to the beer section, you gotta go to the Renegade series, and you can actually search it up, which is nice. They have a, uh, like an archive, per se, of all the Renegade series. Really love that aspect. Because uh, a lot of breweries, or at least some that I've seen, is maybe I get a beer, it's in a mix six, or it's just a little bit older of a can, or something like that. It's sometimes hard to find past, like previous brews, they kind of just wipe them out of the system. Cowbell's done it right where they still have the info there for people like me who get to the party a little later. Uh, you have the same exact description, which is really nice, limited release, but you go down, the pairings are a little bit different. Not per se different, but just added stuff on the website. We have uh, grilled red meats and vanilla ice cream, poutine, uh, and poutine uh, added to here. Also, the beer specs, I guess when this initially came out, part of the Renegade series, it was a little bit boozier at 4.8%, but my can is at 4%. So, again, this was in the Christmas pack. This is number 23 in the Renegade series, so a little much, much longer ago. So, things to note. The tasting notes is also slightly different. They say the aroma immediately shows Americano coffee, espresso grinds, cacao nibs, and vanilla wafers. Delicious flavor come through of chocolate, vanilla, and baked cookie sensation. So very similar to uh, to the tasting note on here. Also, the serving temp is three degrees. Guess I skipped over that. Three degrees, regular fridge temp, I think. But yeah, beautiful looking website. Again, a lot of dead space for the Renegades here. Would really like to see. There's just a picture of the can or uh, a picture of the beer in a pint glass because this is, uh, even though it's mostly gone, it's still a beautiful looking pint. You saw it when I first poured it. Amazing. Over on Untapped, uh, vanilla black lager, oatmeal vanilla black lager, sorry, has been given a 3.89 bottle caps out of five. And that's out of just under 1,400 ratings. Obviously, I don't have a price for you, because this did come in a mix six. Don't really think you can get it on its own. Uh, I might as well check for you. Why not? Why not just, just, just check a little bit for you, but I don't think we can, because uh, they're not brewing it. Uh, nope, 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 can't get it. Can't get it. Y'all are shit out of luck. Sorry guys, but hey, if you've had this beer, let me know what you thought of it, because uh, I'd like to see what you think. Other than that, fantastic brew. I'm gonna finish this off, get back to uh, some recipe formulation, and uh, damn. This is really good. <laughs> cheers, everybody. Uh, on the what, what sip is this? Final sip? Yeah, cheers on the final sip. Oh, let's get ready to drink and wrap this thing up. Cowbell Brewing. Oatmeal Vanilla Black Locker by far. Something that really took me by storm. I didn't know what to expect from this one because Black Lockers usually don't have a huge... Yeah, they can have a big flavor profile for sure. Um, not as close to a stout, but this right here. God damn, it is chocolatey, it's lightly roasty, it is light, not heavy at all. Maybe a little too light in comparison to how intense the flavors are. But overall, a fantastic brew. Oatmeal Vanilla Black Lager gets a solid, ooh baby, gets a solid 8-6. Out of 10 for me this is just a uh oh oh it's a great thing that four percent if i only had more oh jeez please bring this back this is a oh it's a stellar it's a stellar beer guys stellar beer indeed presentation again love the renegade series cans with the black a little bit of matte finish fantastic uh abv ibu srm temperature serving glass nice long description um Pairings, tastings, clearly labeled can on date, which I didn't even read, uh, September 22nd, 2020. A little older of a can, but not too bad, because it's still fantastic. Website, looking good as always. Missing a picture of the beer, but hey, that's just me, me being maybe a little nitpicky, but again, pairings, tasting notes, ABV, IBU, SRM, temp, and glass. Great, great stuff as long, along with the um, uh, description. 
<clears throat> but yeah, overall presentation, presentation gets a solid 9 out of 10 for me. I think that's pretty much what I gave the other ones, 9 or 9.5, one of the two, whatever they were for the other Renegade series, it's the exact same. It is, it is, it's fantastic. But before I leave you guys, if you have any comments, questions, or beers on my view in the future, you can leave all of that information down in the comment box below. If you want to go ahead and like this video or subscribe to me, Mate Bruski, it would be greatly appreciated as well. And with all that said, that's good to do for me, Mate Bruski. Like I always say, crack a beer and enjoy. Cheers. Hopefully you guys can guess what I'm going to be brewing. It's already been brewed and there should be a video, hopefully. If not, check the Instagram. Cheers.